Hi, everybody. I'm Eric Howell, for those of you who don't know me. And, uh, and I am an engineer. And uh, what I, Scott, I, by the way, I wanted to take the time to thank the Miller Colson families for their generous support of this academy and to let you know how absolutely thrilled and honored I am to be part of it now. And it's too late, you can't take it back, Scott. Um, I, uh, I, uh, Scott asked me to talk about the skillful negotiation of the healthcare system, which is, uh, right, you know, you don't get a lot of people saying, thank you for helping me get through the hospital without a problem. It's not as glitzy and glamorous as uh, bedside uh, uh, clinical excellence or clinical acumen. But it is my passion, and I think it's been woven into my DNA. So um, my family, my parents, had to endure this for years for me uh, looking at better ways to improve systems. And among many tables in my household would be various appliances that were disassembled, uh, including uh, this drill. I didn't always label it so nicely. But ever since I can remember as a little kid, I like to take apart things and see how they work. Um, occasionally, I could put them back together. <laughs> As I got older, I got more interested in how things worked. I worked on cars. In fact, I put the camshaft in backwards of my mother's Volkswagen Rabbit. She doesn't probably care now. That was 30 years ago. Um, and I started to look at other things that were more complicated, boats, airplanes, airports, marinas, and thank goodness later hospitals. I've always been interested in how things work from the inside, what makes them tick. What are the gears that make the clocks go around in the hospital? And these things really crystallized for me when a patient of mine named Alice had a problem. Uh, she was a woman who had chronic illnesses. I had known her for years. She was in and out of the hospital. In fact, I knew her as a resident. And she used to call me all the time for advice. And she called me one night saying that she felt short of breath. She had emphysema or COPD, and I could hear her wheezes on the phone. And I said, Alice, you need to go. She called me Eric, so it's OK. I called her Alice. I hope that's all right. <laughs> but uh, she said, I said, Alice, you need to go to the emergency room. Hang up and call 911. I called the emergency department. I let them know that she was coming. And hour after hour, I called looking for her, and she never showed. I called her house the next day when I couldn't find her records in our EMR, electronic medical record system, and she wasn't here. And I actually was afraid that she had died. I called her house, and weeks later, I got in touch with her, and she relayed me this story. She had called 911. She lives two blocks away from, Bal from Bayview. But they didn't take her here. We were on what's called red alert, or ambulance diversion when the ICUs and the monitored beds are full, and they took her to an outside hospital. But that's not the worst of it. She was chronically ill, had a lot of medical problems. The hospital she went to didn't know her, she didn't know the docs, and they started a workup from one of her chronic problems, and they caused her to have a pneumothorax, which is a collapsed lung. She had a long recovery, eventually she recovered, but that morbidity to me left a lasting impression about the hospital and the healthcare system. And what a shame it was that it was broken. It got me thinking, and I was fortunate enough to be asked at about the same time if I could help fix things like red alert. And we did, with the help of nurses, emergency room doctors, ICU doctors, and hospitalists, we took red alert, which when Alice came to the hospital happened 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year, year after year, thousands of hours a year, and drove that down to 40 hours a year, year after year. And so that patients like Alice can come to the institution that they want to come to, where the doctors know them. But what's really, I think, fascinating for me and the reason that I'm passionate about healthcare systems, skillful negotiation of them, is because I didn't just, we didn't just help the Alice out there. We helped all of the Alice's get extra access to our emergency department and our department of medicines. The thousands and tens of thousands of patients that need our institution have been helped by essentially us improving the system. So I'd just like to close by saying thank you. I hope that uh, for those parents out there, I hope they'll be as understanding as my parents were when I poured oil into the cl clutch mechanism of that Volkswagen <laughs> Rabbit and it had to be towed away. Because those people, those sons and daughters, may be learning important skills so they can be the mechanics of the healthcare system of the 21st century. Thank you.